Hello and welcome to Project Home DIY. I'm Christine, the owner, curator, and designer of your Project Home Boxes. Welcome to June. And here we have the start of summer. And so these little bud vases will be the perfect addition to any decor. I'm excited to get started. We haven't offered something like this before. And a little bit of building, which our VIP group has asked to get back to some building things. So we've got a little bit of building here. Um, and a little bit of decorating and we're gonna do a new technique too. So make sure that you um, Stay tuned to learn how to create a chippy paint look on our Budding trio if you're brand new with us. You have a new starter kit. The starter kit is in your first month box or if you purchased a kit prior to Receiving your first month box the starter kit is in there. You will you can use the um, paints inside there and we will need the sanding block and possibly the hot glue gun for the, some of the floral. Um, so make sure you have those tools ready to go and we will get started. I'm going to move the camera around to my side so you can watch from a bird's eye view exactly how I'm gonna do this. So we'll see you on the other side. All right, so first steps, we will um, begin painting our wood. I'm going to go for the chippy look. So this might be a new technique for some of you. Some of you may be well versed in the chippy look. Um, but I decided to do this because it's a new thing and will make this little budding trio um, stand out a little bit with the chippy paint look. So chippy paint look does take a little bit more time because generally there's three to four layers. I'm going to do three. And the colors I'm going to use are from the starter kit. So I'm going to use bark and then I'm going to use slate, which my bottle's squished. There we go. Slate. And then the top coat of paint, I'm going to use just a white um, paint that I have separately. So I'm not going to use the cotton from the kit because our antiquing paints are a little more thin coverage than I want for the top coat of this. So I'm gonna use a little bit more solid color paint, which there are lots of like, um, of course, like 59 cents at Walmart, lots of little brands of any kind of acrylic paint you can grab. Um, this is vanilla from DeRice, just a simple acrylic paint. So I always have lots of these on hand, just different um, colors. And especially, um, I like Project Home base colors as far as color color goes, but then for like my top finishing coat, I do like these more, um, the white paints that I have. So this is the same as from the clock paint. So it's kind of a general paint that we use a lot. So trick with the chippy paint. You need some sort of wax to create a barrier between your paint layers. So when you paint, we'll add some wax and then we'll paint over it. And what it's doing is creating like, say like a saran wrap layer over that, those two colors of paint. So then when we sand, that layer will, that part where you chippied um, will come off a lot easier. So you can do as much or as little as you want. And you're probably going, I don't have wax. I don't know what I'm going to use. You have the perfect item and I'm using chapstick. It's an old tube of chapstick. Works great. You can use a long candle. If you have a candle, any kind of candle wax, any kind of chapstick, any kind of Vaseline, a little smear, that will work. Um, anything that's going to create a barrier between the two. I'm using chapstick. I can't guarantee other methods, but this is the way that I'm gonna do this chippy paint with. So, steal your husband's ex chapstick that's out of his truck like I did, and um, you'll have to replace it with a better one because you're definitely gonna use it. So, let's get started. And the way I'm going to start is by um, starting with my brown first. And the cool part, sorry about that, about chippy paint is we don't have to be perfect by no means okay so keep that in mind don't feel like 
your coverage and your paint has to be perfect. Let me grab my paint brushes over here. Because it definitely doesn't. A chippy look is a rough look, okay? So keep that in mind when you're building. These blocks are the side pieces. This is the bottom with the two screws and the top. And these are also with the big bold screws. This is the outside. Um, they are drilled that way, so then the screw sinks in and sits flush, but then we will cover up that screw with our really pretty little brackets, okay? So, um, keep in mind, this is the outside. You can determine which is the outside for the bottom piece. You can determine what is the top or the bottom for the bud base holder piece. I'm gonna go with, I do see a little bit more um, wear on how that was cut, so I'm gonna go with this as the top. These are all pre-drilled, which is super awesome. Um, <clears throat> this is the best, absolutely best way you guys can start doing projects because you don't have to worry about getting every piece perfectly cut. We already did that work for you, so that's pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna start painting my pieces <clears throat> again one full coverage coat is not um, the goal here. So don't worry about not getting it on there perfect, okay? You can see I'm holding this with my thumbnail. So dry time is going to be a little bit higher because we're going to have three coats. Um, and yeah, it's just going to take a little bit more time. Keep that in mind. There is the first piece. Again, not perfect. I don't want it to be. And if you know me and have done projects with me before, I have a small little space heater over here to my side. You can hear it now. Um, and I put my pieces under heat and they'll dry much quicker. So I kind of just set them up against the floor and let them dry under that. This is the other fun thing about chippy paint is you don't have to be perfect. You can do this with furniture. You can do this with um, other wall hangings, anything you want to paint. You can do this exact same technique too. dried pieces and we will do our chapstick trick. So I really want to work on these edges and make sure that these edges are what's showing the chippy through. So that's where I'm going to mainly put the wax. Um, just running it along here, not all down the side, but just in certain areas. And remember, we'll have the gray too, the gray color. So each time that you wax, like certain, um, that area, now this brown is protected. So um, I don't want to do the whole thing in just brown because I want to be able to include some gray in there too. So I did my edges, I added a little speckles here and there, and now I'm going to paint over that. Just getting rid of rubbing in a little bit of the chunks. If I turn it a certain way towards the light, I can see. See, you can see the reflection of where that is at. Okay, now I'm going to do the slate color. Same thing, don't have to be super precise, just get it covered. Um, the last coat will be more the one that we make sure that we get 
really good. Okay, the gray is dry. You can see the areas where the chapstick was put, the wax. Um, so you can kind of keep track of that when you go to paint your third layer and then wax. Um, or I mean, sorry, when you go to wax your second layer, um, you won't go over those same spots, which you don't have to. So this will allow the gray part to show through. So we're gonna create another second barrier. Okay, added the second layer of wax, AKA chapstick, our little secret ingredient. Okay. All right, I'm gonna paint the last coat. This coat I'm gonna want full cover, or not full, full coverage, but um, I'm not going to do like this on it. I'm going to paint completely solid over that. So I'll paint it much nicer. When I'm painting things like this, um, I always don't drag your brush against a ledge. See how it puddles up the paint? Yeah, then you got lots of fixing to do. Always go with the ledge. See, just like that. So then you're not painting against it and dragging paint through it. So I like to get a good layer of paint on things. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth quite yet. I will work on the smooth part in a second. So I just like to get a good layer on there. Here again, I'm not going, I'm not pulling my brush against the ledges, the edges, because then I'll get drips just like that which I don't want to do. Dabbing is really good. Um, dabbing your paintbrush like this works really well on um, the end grain cut parts of wood. Just keep that in mind. Okay, this is the underside. See, now I'm gonna go back over and kind of smooth out my paint that way. And I'm okay with this uneven look. That's kind of what the whole point I'm going for. This is my top side. You can see your paint doesn't like that waxy part, which is good. We don't want it to like that part. Okay, I'm gonna let those dry, and while those are drying, I'm gonna start on my floral and just kind of laying them out. If you're using these as true traditional bud bases, you won't need the floral, but <clears throat> I wanted to include the floral so you had something to put in it. If you're like me, um, I cannot really grow much, and so I wanted something super elegant, dainty, of course, because the bud bases are dainty themselves but to be able to put in these bases. So I think this dried floral is just perfect. So just take it and set it out piece by piece of what you have so you can kind of see your different heights, um, different little mixes here that we have. Some might be a little squish, but this green stuff, the dried hydrangea, works really well as like a little filler to put pieces in to get some height. This is really fun, little ball. There's another little white fluff. Ooh, this is fun. This is a nice long one. Here's another white.
white fluff. That's kind of that. Okay, these little pieces I'm not going to use. Those, there's that. Yeah, these little guys probably won't use. Just a little scrap. Okay, this rose is super cute. Everything needs to unfluff a tiny bit. But look how perfect. It'll never not look like that. It's just beautiful. Um, you can use the wires to give it a little bit more stem if you need to. That one does will need a little bit more, except for this is when these little dudes work really well because you can actually just stick the rose just like that in your little bud base. Um, kind of hard to do right now without having the bud bases up, but just kind of be thinking about like a combination that you like put together. You may not have that on there. I like the height. Ooh, this is cute. Like that. We're going to put little things together. And then you can take your wire and wrap it right around these to keep them together. Just like that. And those will look nice in the bud base as well. So little tiny bundles like that. Different heights, different elements. If you want something a little bit more, Pull it, extend it. So that is cute. I love it. That's exactly how I imagined this. Just super cute, dainty, and just perfect. And there's one. that guy I kind of want a little bit more height to him so if I take like this guy that has a little bit longer stem we can create that height again these are just for some filler if you need them. If you don't do bud vases or just something for to put in the vases. But if your kids are anything like mine, mine always have stuff for dandelions for mom. These will be perfect for that. Okay, let's check our wood. It's in the dryer. I'm sure you can hear the dryer. Here's the first piece. You can tell the chapstick marked pieces. They're gonna come through when we start sanding. That one's nice and dry, but I'm gonna keep it in there for just a little while longer. Okay, so I will be back when we're ready to sand. Okay, ready to sand and get our chippy look coming through. So get your sanding block. Um, if you have a hand sander or like a small orbital sander, you can use that on this as well. Um, if not, just use your sanding block. If the paint, this may gum up your sanding block a little bit. So keep that in mind, you might have to get a new one after this or scrub it clean you can wash these underwater um may have to do a little tlc to your sanding block after this but i'm just going to sand the edges and you can already see with very little effort that comes through right down to my brown paint
Okay, there is one of the side pieces. Here's the gray coming through. There's all the way to the brown. Here's the gray. Here's some gray at the bottom. The, if you want more of a look, keep sanding. If you want less, stock. If you don't want any at all, don't use um, the chapstick method at all. Okay, that one's all finished. Look how pretty. There's our brown coming through. Here's the gray. Super fun new technique for you guys that you can use on almost anything. Very cool. Look at that. Can't wait to put this together. Okay. Sanding the top. See how gummy it is? Yuck. If you have two sanding blocks, you can rub them together. Get some of that out of there. Piece and here's my bottom. Very cool. Okay, so these are all sanded. Look how pretty they are. They're so pretty. Okay, now it's time to put them together. So your kit did come with a screwdriver. Um, if you want to use a drill, have at it. This is, um, you can use a drill if you have one, go for it. If not, use a little screwdriver or a bigger screwdriver if you prefer. But again, these are all pre-drilled. Everything's made just so that you can just work on it. So these screws, you can get them started by hand. Remember the screws are down for the side pieces, they're on the bottom. And they very easily just go right in. Again, because that's pre-drilled, it's kind of awesome. Sorry if I look out of the video. Okay, now I have to decide which I want as my front. I think I like, yeah, I like this side better. So I'm gonna put the bulbs towards the front and put this piece down like this. not at the angle I would usually work at, but I'm just trying to stay here so you guys can see. I'm gonna turn it sideways. This is how I would 
screw this together. Okay, it's not all the way put together by no means yet. I will get that. I will tighten everything in just a minute. Make sure that you do sink those screws so they are sunk in there. That's how we know that they're tight. Okay, I'm going to go back and tighten this one. Okay. Bud face is assembled. Looks awesome. I love it. Okay, for the brackets, these just add a little bit of flare, cover up the screws, just an additional little touch that we had that I designed because I didn't want the screws showing. So um, these, there are not pre-drilled holes. So they might be a little bit more difficult to screw in. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. Don't get frustrated, just keep going. So I'm gonna place it on there. I'm trying to get at a good angle without being in front of the screen. Thankfully, there's only a few of these. Holy cow. This little screwdriver is hard to hold. I am going to get a bigger one to do these. Oh, that's too big. Maybe this guy. Yes, okay. There we go. So when it gets tough, you might have to Grab a different screwdriver. Make sure that's brackets on there straight. Okay. And there's one bracket. So go ahead and grab the rest. They go on top and bottom if you choose. You can spray paint these, you can change the color, whatever you want to do too. Okay, brackets are on. That was a little bit of work, but that's okay. It's okay, you'll be proud of yourself when it's all done. Um, and I am loving the finished look of this. Look at that, beautiful. Okay, just time to put our bud bases in and fill them. And I did just, 
kind of stuff the little green dried hydrangea in there ever so slightly. Here's this. So pretty. I just love these florals, except for I think I'm gonna do, I have to always have some sort of pattern or something. So I'm gonna do hydrangeas on both ends. Where, there's my third. Okay, stuff this guy in. Use this, just kind of, I'm gonna stuff them in there last. Use this guy. Why is everything a guy? I don't know. But that's what I keep saying. Maybe use a little wire. Just wrapping it around. And then I'm going to stick this in. Oh, I didn't want to squish that down. There we go. Keep the height. Oh my. So cute. Okay, I know exactly where. I'm going to take maybe this guy. Or one of these little... And I'm going to use this for the stem for my rose. If I can get it in there. Eek! I have to poke it first. There we go. Okay, I got it in there. And I'm going to stick that one right there. I have extra. I may as well use it it in and that is our finished project. Beautiful. Oh my. So I cannot wait to see what you guys put in your bud bases, how you decide to finish the chapstick and the wax that you use make sure that you come to our vip group um, on facebook the link to join is at the bottom of these instructions join that group and we would love to see your creations and we're starting something new we started it with last month with our excuse me the herringbone tray project um finish your project by the end of the month Put your project's photo in the album and we will take the top five and the group will be able to vote on their favorites so make sure that you finish when you get your june project finish it and add it to the album by the end of the month so then you can be entered and we can vote for takes the craft i think is instead of take the cake it's take the craft challenge so make sure that you join us in the vip group it's on facebook it's pretty fun um it's kind of like a hidden gem of the project home world so thank you for joining us and enjoy your budding trio till next time see you later